Support for WYES is made possible by Mary Lou Kristovich in memory of her husband, William Kristovich. Scott Laborde and welcome to Stepping Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, Dr. Laura Hope, Chair and Associate Professor of Theater, Arts and Dance and Artistic Director for Loyola University's Theater Department. She is here to discuss the university's production of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, which she directed. Hi, good Hi. to see you. Welcome. Thank you so much for having and me. And we'll have a, an excerpt from it a little later, so we're <laughs> thrilled with that. And New Orleans chef Kevin Belton, yay! here to discuss his first national cooking series and produced by WYS. It's called New Orleans Cooking with Kevin Belton and it premieres locally tomorrow morning right here in WYS. Welcome Kevin. Thank you so much. Good to see you. And George Sanchez is back with us and he is an author and he of course has done um, a long string of mystery novels but also a very noted New Orleans actor too. The name of his book A Place Unchanged in New Orleans Mystery. Welcome. May Thank welcome, you. George. Thank you. And of course, he's back, stepping out theater critic Alan Mason, who is the editor of the Crescent City Jewish News. Hello, sir. Hey. And Poppy Tooker returns next week. But first up, we're so excited for you. A national series. We knew you win. I, you knew me win. And you know what? You still know me now. I, I, it still hasn't dawned on me, Peggy, that I am doing a national program. What sets I mean, this apart now from you, the usual cooking shows? Well, you know, I think with New Orleans cooking, it's all about getting people at the table. So a lot of our folks eat our food, but they're not, they don't know how it's made. And I just hopefully show people how simple it is to get them to want to try it and then to sit at the table with family and friends and visit over food. And That's what we do. And you watching some of these shows, didn't you? I grew up watching Julia Child, I watched Graham Kerr, but more importantly, the WYS produced programs like Justin Wilson, the best mm -hmm. chefs of New Orleans and the best chefs of different cities, mm -hmm. and Paul Perdome and John Besh, and now that I am responsible for keeping the train on the track, so to <laughs> exactly. say. Exactly, and before we move much further, let's go and see a clip from this new series. Let's take a look. I've had our skillet heating up, and basically we want equal amounts, flour and oil. So now that our oil is heated, we can go in with our flour. This is just all-purpose flour. Don't use a self-rising flour because it might pop on you. But notice as it goes in, this is not going to lump because we're putting the flour directly into the oil. So often folks will cook a chicken or a turkey and they pour the drippings in the skillet, add flour to it and it lumps because the flour hits drippings. For flour to cook, it has to cook in oil or butter. That's why this is not gonna lump on me. It'll smooth itself out because it's going directly into the oil. You never want to use a Teflon coated pan for a roux because you want to be able to feel it if it would scorch. So you want stainless steel, you want cast iron. But notice, I'm not stirring this very fast. It's not how fast we stir this, that we stir the entire pan. Something that goes into all Louisiana dishes is onion, celery, green pepper. Traditional cooking, you hear chefs use the term mirepoix, which is onion, celery, carrot. We're the only state that has a coast but no coastline. We didn't have any sandy soil for carrots to grow, so instead of growing carrots, we grew the green peppers, the bell peppers. And since South Louisiana is predominantly Catholic, these three ingredients together come together to give us such great flavor, and it got the nickname of the Trinity. I tell you what, I, I really think mother and grandmother would be proud. I could hear my sons now running up talking about, Dad, is it ready yet? Dad, is it ready yet? Yes, it is. Just a tiny little sprinkle of parsley and maybe just a few little green onions. And let me, let me tell you, this is one of those wonderful dishes that grandmother and mom made for myself and my dad, shrimp creole. Remember, it's people that make New Orleans food, not the recipes. So always trust your own taste. And we'll see you next time for more New Orleans cooking. New 
Orleans Cooking with Kevin Belton premieres. That's tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. with a repeat on Sunday afternoon at 1 right here in WYS TV Channel 12. Now, we're also excited you have a brand new cookbook in conjunction with the series. You know, I did the book just like the show. In the show, we do three recipes on each show. So in the book, I did each chapter is a show. So we did like Italian influence, German heritage, Such a good idea. mom's Saturday staples, mm -hmm. and it's just, and of course, Peggy, being a New Orleanian, look at the cover. Uh, <laughs> I had to do the cover with the newspaper and the crabs. Uh, but hopefully folks around the country, they can take the book, they can watch the program, and then go, I can do this. Yeah. These are yeah. easy, simple and it's recipes. it's really beautifully done. It's not only easily um, understandable, but also it just, the photographs are just gorgeous. You know too. something that's really shocking is the amount of people that have told me, you know, I was reading the book, and there was something that Grandma did, and I had totally forgotten about, now I know how to do it. <laughs> so I must be doing something right. We would be <laughs> remiss if we didn't mention, of course, you have been involved with the New Orleans School of Cooking for how many years? 19. I've wow. showed a lot of people how to do New Orleans yeah. cuisine when they come to visit. Uh -huh. And now this gives me the opportunity to show New Orleans cuisine to the nation. And you've got a website and hopefully for they, more information. For more information. <laughs> you know what? WIES. If they come to our website at WIES, uh -huh. they can get all the information they want to connect to the school, to connect to me, to connect Sounds to anybody good. they want to. Okay, mm -hmm. New Orleans School of Cooking. Great, great to hear that. And I just wanted to say, speaking of food, this Sunday, don't miss the seventh annual, I love saying this, Pinch of Palooza, okay, <laughs> in front of Jeannie's. That's in Bucktown. And that is from 11 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Vince Vance, among the many performers that day, go to Pinch of Palooza. Com. Somebody actually has a website called Pinchapalooza.com. And now George Sanchez, by day, actor, teacher, but by night. I don't, when do you write your mystery series? I, I, I got a blot after Kevin <laughs> and mentioned Dini's. Uh, <laughs> But um, you've, uh, this is what, how many, this is the, how many is this, this is now? This is the third one, uh, okay. and I'm writing the fifth one. The, the fourth okay. one will come out sometime in the, in the future. Okay. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I've written all my life. Uh, first thing I wrote was in the fourth grade. It was a poem, which I still remember, and I am not going to recite, no matter how <laughs> much <laughs> you offer me. And um, uh -huh. at some point, they said, why don't you write plays? Because, you know, you're an actor. So I started writing plays, and I did that for a lot of years. But, you know, if you do novels, you don't have to mess with actors. <laughs> <laughs> they just do what you, you tell them to do, and, it, and, it's, and it's heaven. Now, you're signing tomorrow at Maple Street for, for more than just the reason of signing books. Well, I was horrified to learn uh, earlier that uh, Maple Street was thinking of closing because uh, they didn't have business. And so um, I thought, okay, when my next book comes out, I want to do it there, and I'm going to do all the proceeds uh, to the store. Gladden doesn't want to do that, but I'm bigger the than owner. he is, so uh -huh. I'll see that uh, <laughs> okay. he takes all of it. And uh -huh. then while I was uh, over in, uh, in Ireland uh, just recently, I read that, you know, he was robbed, so that's more yeah. reason. Uh, yeah. I mean, we have got to support our local bookstores. I mean, I shop at Barnes & Noble because they carry my book, but uh, the local Local bookstores is where I fell in love with books. It's an experience, a charming experience it is. as well. Go through that, or, or even Garden District to mention Absolutely. the competitor. Many fine local you are just Octavia, surrounded by course. books and yeah. consumed by books. Now, set up. We're, we're going to you're going to do a reading for us tonight. Set this up for us. This okay. Scene, well, uh, Jeff is an actor, not very good. So he's based on me, <laughs> and he's been working in the Midwest. And the first book, his mother calls him home because his father's died. Second book, his mother calls him home because All he's. Set uh -huh. All set in New Orleans. That's mm -hmm. what I know. They said, write about what you know. I know something about theater. I know something about New Orleans. So he's met Brenna, and they've fallen in love. And in the third book, he's come down to marry her. All right. And so here is Mr. George. He's Sanchez. kidnapped. Uh oh. And uh -oh. he has to find her and get her back. And now here's Mr. Okay. George. Sanchez. <laughs> Let's watch George Sanchez with his excerpt. I stopped at the entrance to a room where the smell of cordite was heavy. Guns had been fired. I scooted quickly through. There was a sweet, coppery smell that I didn't like because I knew what it was. As I edged around the door jamb, I put my hand into something sticky and backed away. It had already clotted. 
I hadn't gone three feet when I found the first body. The hall was too narrow to get by, so I crab walked over him. Brenna was on the floor with her back to the wall. She wore only a shirt covered in blood, black in the dim light from the window. The howl of the storm outside was nothing compared to the one I wanted to release. But I had to be sure there was no one else in the room. Then I would go to Brina to find what I would find. George's website, that's georgesanchez.com, or you can find him on Twitter or Facebook, and you can always visit southerngirlpress.com to learn more about his books. We so appreciate George being here tonight. And New Orleans Magazine's quiz queen, Julia Street, has a question for us. Last time, Jay Clark named the two oldest restaurants in the quarter. Of course, we're talking Antoine's and Two Jacks. Now tonight's question. All right, this song was originally recorded by a New Orleanian, Irma Thomas, and then by an internationally famous rock group. Name the song and the group. Email your answers to steppinout at wis.org. Our prizes, a year subscription to Louisiana Life magazine. Tonight we have an apron as worn by WYS's own Ashley Richard Morris with one of our favorite messages, Pop poor party champagne which sounds like a really good request to me and that's from our friends at wearablevegetables.com you can visit wys.org for our online calendar to see our lineup of events including amazing grapes 2016 a fine wine auction that's on april the 23rd and that's to support our educational programs at the herman grimma and gallier historic houses all the information's on our calendar and link to our w WYS YouTube channel to visit our program on our home page. And now to Laura. Much ado. Yes. Congratulations. It's very exciting. Thank you so did much. Did you get to choose that play to direct? I actually didn't get to choose that. Well, I sort of did. You didn't I gave mind the some assignment. suggestions. Um, I had spent the last eight months living in Sicily. Uh, oh. Last eight months of 2015 living in Sicily. And so when they said, you know, We'd like you to do a Shakespeare comedy. I said, well, what about one of the ones set in Sicily, since I've been over here enjoying the countryside so much? And uh, so Georgia said, yes, OK, let's do Much Ado. So that's how <laughs> that works. That works. works. <laughs> exactly. Now, um, in terms of Loyola's theater department, it's vast and it's multifaceted, isn't it? You all do a lot of stuff. We do. We do quite a lot of stuff for such a small department. We actually don't have that many people in the department. We keep it small so that you get a lot of individual attention. But for a, a small department, we do a lot of work. So it's very exciting to be able to watch the students grow in the four years that they're with us. Yes. Now we're going to show an excerpt. Set up the scene for us, please. Okay. Well, well, this is from Act Four of Much Ado About Nothing. And um, you're going to see Beatrice and Benedict. This is the very famous Kill Claudio scene, where Beatrice's cousin Hero has been left at the altar by um, Claudio, who is Benedict's friend and fellow soldier. And so this is the aftermath of a woman being left at the altar and presumably left for dead, because Hero faints dead away, and everyone thinks that she's dead. And our actors? Our actors are Kelsey Brem, playing Beatrice. And Samuel Ravello Jr. playing Benedict. Let's visit with them. Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. I shall not desire that. You have no reason. I do it freely. Surely I do believe your fair cousin is wrong. Oh, how much might would the man deserve of me that would right her? Is there any way to show such friendship? A very even way. But no such friend. Uh, may a man do it? It is a man's office, oh, but not yours. I do love nothing in the world so much as you. Is it not strange? Uh, a stranger thing I know not, for it was as possible for me to say I love nothing so well as you. But believe me not, yet I lie not. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. I am sorry for my cousin. Lady Beatrice, by my sword, thou lovest me. Oh, do not swear and eat it. I will swear by it that you love me, and I will make him eat it that says I love not you. Will you not eat your word? There's no sauce that can be devised to it. I protest I love thee. Why then, God, forgive me. What offense, sweet Beatrice? 
You have stayed me in a happy hour. I was about to protest I loved you. And do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that there is none left to protest. Come, bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. <laughs> Not for the wide world. Oh, you kill me to deny it. Farewell. Tarry, sweet Beatrice. In faith, I will go. We'll be friends first. You dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy. Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height of villain, who have slandered, scorned, dishonored my kinswomen? Oh, that I were a man. Oh, God, that I were a man. I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Hear me, good Beatrice. Sweet hero is wronged. She is slandered. She is undone. Beatrice. Generals and captains, an allied testimony, a goodly captain, a captain confect, a sweet gallant, surely. Oh, that I were a man for his sake, or that I had any friend that would be a man for my sake. But manhood has melted into compliments, valor into courtesies, and men only turned to tongue, and trim ones too. He is now as valiant as Hercules, who only tells a lie and swears it. I cannot be a man with wishing, therefore I will die a woman with grieving. Hear me, good Beatrice, by this hand, I love thee. Oh, use it for my love in some other way than swearing by it. Think you in your soul the Captain Claudio hath wronged hero? Yea, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I am engaged. I will challenge him. I will kiss your hand, and by this day, Claudio shall render me a dear account. Go comfort your cousin. I must say she's dead. And so, farewell. Laura. Laura, we can't help but notice that the costumes are not exactly Elizabethan times. Tell That's us what right. you decided to do there. Well, we set this play, it's already set in Messina, Sicily, and we set it right after World War II. Messina was destroyed twice in about a space of about 30 years. First in 1908 by an earthquake that leveled the city, and the city went largely uh, unreconstructed until the 20s when Mussolini came in. And then it was destroyed again in 1943 by incendiary bombs. Mm. And as I was walking around Messina and seeing how very different it looked from the rest of Sicily and how they considered a city without memory, and yet a city in which the people have had to make a conscious effort to go on, despite all of these catastrophes that had happened in the city, I couldn't help but think of our own city. And I couldn't help but think about how life goes on and love goes on and people continue to fall in love and get married and fight and families scheme and neighbors spy on each other. <laughs> and here they are in the ruins of this city uh -huh. and life goes on. And if if there's any place in the country that understands that, it's us. And we have such a large number of Sicilian Americans living in our city. Mm -hmm. And I just thought to myself, you know what? That brings the play closer to us as New Orleanians. So drama, drama, yes, drama. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And once again, Much Ado About Nothing has its final performance. That's tomorrow night at the Marquette Theater at Loyola University. For tickets, call 865-2835 or visit cmfa.loino.edu. And now it's time for our artist spotlight. Okay, and we are going to be actually talking about two different artists tonight. The uh, first off, two different artists and exhibits. And this first artwork is titled Oop Oop Badoo. That's James Andrews and that's by Donna Leaf a New Orleans resident uh, since the 1960s. Leaf earned her MFA in painting from Tulane University. And this is No Limits Master P. She is a figurative artist, really wonderful work. Her exhibit, And the Beat Goes On, opens with a reception. That's tomorrow evening from six to nine at Coop Doyle uh, Art Consortium on Magazine Street. And you can see more of her work at their website. And for our second spotlight, we go across the lake. We have Bovine Evening by Roland Golden, a New Orleans native 
Golden is nationally recognized. He is quite the artist. He has been exhibiting in over 100 one-man shows, and this is Front Yard Beauties. His work is also included in collections at the New Orleans Museum of Art and the Ogden Museum of Southern Art. His exhibit, Golden's America, runs through May 12th at his gallery on East Lockwood Street. That's in Covington. Visit his website to see more. And now to Mr. Allen. Well, first off, I wanted to uh, let everybody know that as expected, the stage at Delgado Community College was renamed, or named at least, uh, in honor of Timothy K. Baker, who was the longtime theater visionary there, had founded the department, and again, he died, passed away this past year. Uh, again, once a plaque is placed, I'm going to try to get a photo, but I just want to let everybody know about that. Meanwhile, the Tennessee Williams New Orleans Literary Festival is history now, but there is one of its ancillary works just now finishing up. I wanted to let everybody know about that. It's called Weird Tales. It is indeed uh, a production of the Tennessee Williams Theater Company. This is the company that was just founded this past year. And of course, this production is directed by the founders, Augustin Carrero and Nick Shackelford. Now, it's finishing its run this weekend. You might want to uh, take a look at this. It stars some really incredible actors, including Maggie Eldred, David Williams, John wow. Giardina, Emily Russell, Alexander Kennan, Christopher Grimm, and Andrew King. Uh, many of this ensemble was also seen in their earlier productions of Kingdom of Earth and Small Craft Warnings. This is a bizarre Tennessee Williams group of one act strung together. Um, I guess you might say uh, Carrero uses these little connecting tissues, if you will, uh, that he has little small uh, scenes to connect these works. And you might think of it as sort of a reworking of Tennessee Williams meets Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the acting, though, is top notch, and the material uh, is, you know, it is somewhat weird, Tennessee Williams. So uh, some people may find it a bit lacking, but throughout the scenes, we see some, some wonderful well, it was work. Early work. Yeah, it, it is very early work. Hart yeah. Crane with his mother addressing uh, each other, a psychiatrist uh, and his patient uh, trying to work out uh, her problems, resolve them, or maybe they're his problems. Uh, again, finally, a theater scene that's right out of Tennessee Williams that we're going to love, classic Tennessee, with an odd procession of characters. Again, this is Weird Tales. To my thinking, it's weird, but good. Again, it's running uh, Saturday and Sunday at the Metropolitan Church at the corner of Henry Clay Avenue. Now, one of the most inventive stagings I've ever seen of Shakespeare is going on just now for a few days more at Tulane University. This is an all-female production of Julius Caesar, directed mm -hmm. by British director Mel Cook. Uh, it is a student production, yes, but there are some really outstanding performances, including one by Rachel Varela, who I will tell you plays Casca, a smaller role, but she really is outstanding. She has great stage presence. I give stage uh, credits also to Audrey Catalano as Cassius, Sarah Holt as Caesar, and Kiara Milliner as Brutus. Now, Cook has been asked back to direct two more plays next year. She comes from Britain, but she actually spent time here in New Orleans as a student, as I understand it. I did talk with her, after, actually, and uh, she's looking forward to coming back. Now, the one centerpiece of this whole production that is so fantastic is the actual giant steel structure that was built by MFA candidate Mihai Plaisu. Now, what Plaisu did was actually construct uh, four different stairs that go up onto a platform. It is extended up. They have projections that are actually put on it, and after Caesar uh, is uh, assassinated, you actually see the body descend down into the grave mm -hmm. along wires. It is amazing. I do want everybody to know about this. It's going on for the remainder of the run Saturday and Sunday at 8 p.m. and 2 p.m. Again, you'll see the Dixon Performing Arts Center. Again, I hope everybody gets a chance to see that. Now, coming up in 2016, 2017, we have uh, a couple of production companies that want to announce what some of their works are going to be. First off, Southern Rep's 30th anniversary season, right behind the Tennessee Williams Festival, is going to be starting off with Lisa de Amour's incredible work, Airline Highway, straight from Broadway. Uh, they are reworking some of the pieces that uh, were uh, written out for the New York audiences and writing them back in for the benefit of New Orleans audiences. We'll st see that starting off their main stage, Airline Highway, in October. That'll be followed by Grounded. This is um, uh, going to star Big Easy Award winner Carrie Cahill, who stars as an Air Force pilot who has to navigate through an unplanned pregnancy. That'll be in November. And then, of course, uh, in uh, time for the Tennessee Williams New Orleans uh, Literary Festival uh, of 2017, we're going to have Sweet Bird of Youth starring Leslie Castay. Mm. So that'll be great, as mm. well as as the Pulitzer Prize winner, Susie Laurie Parks, who's going to be doing a Civil War drama called Father Comes Home from the Wars, Parts 1, 2, and 3. Again, all part of the Southern Rep season. And meanwhile, no slouches on their own. The NOLA Project is going to have Season 12 announced now. And, and this is all about survival, as they like to say. The first is going to be uh, Gabrielle Reisman's Flood City uh, that runs in September. 
And that'll be followed by John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath uh, in uh, January. Uh, and I, I should also mention also in September, I believe they're going to have um, uh, 4,000 miles. So I mentioned that as well. Um, again, uh, this is all going to be NOLA Project's work. They do such incredible work. And uh, The Spider Queen will follow in May. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll hopefully uh, see a, a, a big play that I've been wanting to see. Didn't get to see it on Broadway. It's only a play. This is Terrence McNally, the uh, wonderful oh. show that starred mm -hmm. so many great people. People like Matthew Broderick and Nathan Lane mm -hmm. and uh, a host of That's other characters, coup. F. Murray Abraham. Yeah, that yeah. is a coup. It's so soon after Broadway, but yeah. that's that's two that we'll be able to see fresh off of Broadway from the previous season, Airline Highway for Southern Rep, and of course wow. for the NOLA project, it's only a play. Okay. Also, uh -huh. uh, In a Forest Dark and Deep is going to be running, and that's Christopher Romage. He's got a brand new company that's going to be having their production mm. at the Trio. I've not heard of this production area where they're going to have it at 3835. Oh, it's yes, lane. it's the so, folks who own uh, Finn McCool. They have an arts and uh, crafts bar, cocktail bar. Okay, well, the downstairs and then upstairs, there's a space. That's running through April okay. 21st. I'll have a review on it that's hopefully at South next week. Scott and Tulane. Okay, okay, very good. Well, then you know that area <laughs> real well. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Okay. I didn't know that. So it's great to know. Time for our picks now, Laura. Well, I tell you, my pick for this week is Out by Logan Faust, which is playing through Sunday at the United Bakery Gallery. Logan is an alum of Loyola University, New Orleans, and we did one of his plays. He writes an absurdist tradition, okay. and so this is a, one of a pair of plays that he wrote while he was still a student. Thank you. Kevin? I have some uh, book signings coming up, and you can go to the New Orleans School of Cooking com or the WYS website to find out. Okay, great. George? Well, it's got to be my brother Paul Sanchez playing at the New Orleans <laughs> Jazz Fest at the end of the month. Of course. <laughs> And Alan. And borrow, plea, cajole, whatever you have to do. Try to get some tickets for the Golden Girls. They're probably sold out at the Rivertown Theaters of Forming Arts. Ricky Graham, Varla Jean Merman and company. Uh, it should be great fun if you can get in. All right. Yes, if you can get in. <laughs> right now, my picks. Okay. The Greater New Orleans Association for the Education of Young Children and WIS present the celebration of the young child. That's tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Marconi Street side of Delgado Community College. And the celebration will offer hands-on activities for children one to eight years old. They can learn how to string necklaces, make music, and more. And there'll also be face painting and chalk drawing, too. And Curious George will be there. You can bring your own picnic lunch. Visit celebrationoftheyoungchild.com to learn more. Also tomorrow, Teaching Responsible Earth Education presents their third annual birthday party from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Couturier Forest Trailhead on Harrison Avenue in City Park. And they'll have lots of forest activities, picnicking, and crafts, and it's free. Visit treetalk.org for more information on that. Tomorrow evening, the Friends of St. Alphonsus will host Art in April, their art auction in Gala to benefit St. Alphonsus's restoration. It will be held at the St. Alphonsus Church on Constant Street. Call 874-8008 or visit stalphonsusneworleans.org to purchase tickets, great refreshments and food and very reasonably priced admission and lots of great art. Also on Wednesday night uh, at St. Alphonsus, Spencer Bourne's going to be playing. So what a great thing. I look forward to St. Alphonsus. And don't forget Musica de Camera. You can go to their website to learn more about their activities. They're continuing in their 50th anniversary celebration. So lots of good things uh, with that as well. And we're so delighted about them. Also, Stephanie Jordan on weekends at the Hyatt, the Hyatt Regency, presenting jazz live at the Hyatt, Fridays and Saturdays through May 11th. Great Stephanie Jordan. And it's, that's May 7th, of course. And don't forget to watch all the great things here at WYS, including Kevin Belton's new show. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much for watching. Good night.